special edition of PFTPM. And joining us now, one of the great players in the National Football League, one of the best tight ends as well. He's here to talk about tight end universities. George Kittle. George, what's up, man? How are we doing today? We're doing great. Not as good as you, though. Tight end university. Tell me what's going on here. Also, title sponsor presented by Charmin. They care about their tight ends. Hey, that's that was nice. That was a nice segue. See, like they care about their tight ends. They protect your backside. And, um, you know, you know, what's else like we've been able to have a lot of really good partners that are allowing us to put this event on, you know, to pay for the guys' hotel, food, transportation, all their amenities. You know, we got Charmin, who's going to be there for the tight ends. We have Levi's, you know, might as well get some jeans for those tight ends. Why not? Got some cold, crispy Bud Lights for those tight ends, you know, if you're of age. And, uh, you know, and then in Nashville, we have Bridgestone, who's, uh, you know, from Nashville, and they're going to take care of us down there as well, you know, maybe put us on some wheels. But uh, we had some great sponsors here, you know, allowing us to do this amazing event for the second year in a row. And we're just really looking forward to it. You know, I'm really waiting for the summer. I've been giving Charmin a lot of free advertising in recent months. Let me tell you why. I know this is about tight end university, but I got to tell you the story. I got a book that came out this year. You can see it there over my shoulder. It's called Playmakers. And I get a lot of reaction along the lines of, hey, I can buy it for toilet paper. And I tell people, if you really want to rip a page out of a book and wipe your butt with it, feel free and you'll deal with the consequences. Stick with Charmin. Stick with Charmin. Stick so, with Charmin. Um, hey, yeah, that, that seems aggressive. That seems yes. aggressive. Yeah, that, I, I tell you, a book, a, the page of a book is not something you want, you want down there. Anyway, um, how did Tight End University come to be? I remember seeing about it last year. We probably had some content about it at PFT, but how, how, did, how did it all happen? Really? So <clears throat> I, I live in Nashville. I train with about six to eight, maybe 10 NFL tight ends um, in the off season. And uh, Greg Olson was retiring and I was like, Hey, Greg, why don't you come down? Like, you know, maybe put us through some workouts, watch some tape. And he was like, Hey, why don't we bring a bunch of tight ends down and we'll kind of make an event out of it. And we you know we both me and Greg share a marketing team. And so we kind of were bouncing ideas off each other. And then we're like, well, if we got Travis to come down too. Let's so we'll, we threw some ideas past him. He was really excited about it. And so we kind of put our heads together and, like, hey, let's do like a <clears throat> tight end university. And uh, it just that's literally how it came together. And um, thank goodness we have a great marketing team that's been able to you know organize everything for us. But um, if we just wanted to bring all these tight ends together on the same roof, watch tape, hang out, get to know each other. And like, you know, like at the end of the day, if if these tight ends come down, they don't learn a single thing about football. At least they've met 50 to 60 other guys who are on the league. And now they know guys are on other teams. They can talk to them, interact with them. And they, that's kind of, you know, the tight end brotherhood is something that I'm trying to extend everywhere. So, uh, you know, just year two, a little bit bigger and better doing it at Vanderbilt University, nice fields and everything. It's, it's going to be a riot. How many more tight ends do you expect this year versus last so year? We had 49 last year and we totally underbooked for that. Our goal is like 25 and we got up to almost 50. Uh, goal this year is, uh, goal is about 80. If we can go a little over, that's awesome. We go a little under, that's fine, but we definitely open it up to more people. So, uh, like I said, we had to go to Vanderbilt, just make it a little bit more bigger, a little bit more space in the high school we used last year, which was also fantastic. But, um, we're looking forward to just bringing all these guys down and another little tidbit, we're bringing in, um, some legends too. So, uh, one of my favorite tight ends all time, Dallas Clark is coming down. He's going to teach a class or two. Um, Tony Gonzalez will be there, I think for a day. Um, he's going on a family vacation and then, uh, Kelsey's working on Antonio Gates. So hopefully we have a couple of legends down there to, you know, talk ball with all the boys. Dallas Clark, 44 with the Colts. I feel like he got overlooked and wasn't appreciated because he was in that offensive machine with Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison, but that guy was putting up huge numbers in his day. Huge numbers with the tape fingers and no gloves. That's what was so cool. He was out there running routes, blocking. You know, I, he was one of my favorite players. I had season tickets at Iowa. So I saw each one of Dallas Clark's college games as well. Who was it that drew you to the tight end position? How did you end up picking that? I didn't really pick it. Iowa just put me there. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out for me, though. They asked, hey, do you want to play Leo linebacker? Or do you want to play tight end? I was like, ah, I'd rather have the ball in my hands. And it worked out for me. How old were you when you figured out you could catch pretty well? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I, I should have won the Heisman in seventh grade as a running back. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, I saw an interview uh, somewhere as I was getting ready for this today, and you've got – a mindset where you try to continue to approach life like you did when you were 13. Mm -hmm. Where did that, that idea come from for you? Uh, well, my dad's always preached to me, like when I'm playing sports, you know, you're going to try to get better. You're going to work hard, but you're going to have fun. And it didn't take me very long to realize that when you're having fun playing football, it's a lot easier. 
And so um, I just try to, I try to do, do right by my 13 year old self. So all the decisions I make, I just try to make that kid proud. Um, so I don't like, I try not to do stupid stuff. I try not to, you know, upset my parents too much. Uh, I just try to be kind to everybody and you know, just, I feel like you can live, if you can live with that, you know, just that childish appreciation um, for life, it just makes your day a little bit better every day. What are some of the challenges though, George, of, of that attitude when you're talking about a billion dollar business and all of the realities of being in the NFL. And we know how guys get chewed up and spit out by the machine and Mm -hmm. you've got to take a stand to get what, what you deserve and you get into battles with management. How hard is it to continue to have that attitude when there are business realities that can maybe make you cynical or jaded by the way it really is? I mean, you know, like definitely like, so for example, like, you know, contract conversations, like when, when I was doing my contract, it's not very fun. I know. I think the best thing I heard about it, it's like braces. You absolutely hate it when, when you're doing it. And the second you get your contract, the braces come off, you got a beautiful smile. You don't really think about braces anymore. I think Richard Sherman told me that one. And you know, that came true for me. He's like, Hey, don't take it personal. Like you, I know like it's, it's tough when you're getting judged, like, Hey, you're only worth this amount. Well, I think I'm worth this amount. And then they, and you're arguing, but at the end of the day, once you get your contract, it's like, all right, well, it is what it is. We said what we said, but we're still here working together to want, try to win a Super Bowl. So you just got you can't think things personal. You just got to move on, honestly. The tight end position league wide. Give me a guy that that you look at and say, wow, that that guy is the guy at the, other than yourself at the tight I mean, end position. So hear me out. I mean, Travis Kelsey, six seasons in a row, a thousand yards. I'm pretty sure he has the most receiving yards over any wide receiver skill position in the last six years. And he gets paid half of what a wide receiver makes, which just boggles my mind. And so, I mean, to me, like Travis Kelsey, he's been doing it for so long and it's such a high level and he doesn't have an off game. Like I think he has one bad game a year and it's just because he's getting triple team. So like he's a player I look at and, like when he gets a ball in his hands, he's a monster. And you know, it's fun too. Is like, more tight ends and more tight ends are starting to get the ball more starting to be more part of the offense, be more explosive. Like I love watching Darren Waller. I love watching Mark Andrews. Um, Ertz is really fun now down in uh, Arizona. Like that's just fun to see him just kind of dominate, get a lot of touchdowns. So Hawkinson, Tunyon. So, I mean, there's all these tight ends that are explosive and fun to watch, but you know, Kelsey's just, when you have six, 1000 yard seasons in a row, man, you're, you're a hell of a football player. You mentioned the pay disparity. The receiver market's gone crazy this offseason. And I hadn't has. thought about it from the perspective of the tight end. It's like, hey, we do the same stuff and we have to block. Like, how do we get lost in the shuffle here? We'll see. I don't know. I mean, I, I would say that every NFL team in the last that's won a Super Bowl or been the Super Bowl for like the last five years is that an all pro tight end a part of the team. So I feel like it's it's a it's a it's not tight ends not just like a cog in the wheel. It's a it's an important position that can really um, add to your offense or does, or diminish it. Is there a receiver out there that you'd like to recruit to the tight end position or receiver to the tight end position? Yeah. Hmm. You know what? I got to hang out with uh, Brandon Marshall for the first time and he is bigger than I am. He's taller than I am. He's got bigger shoulders than I do. He probably weighs five pounds more than me. I was like, what are you doing, Brandon? Like you could come back right now and play tight end. He was like, I don't know. My hips are a little tight. I was like, I mean, you could sign a $10 million contract tomorrow and play for one season, but he'd be pretty fun to watch. And you're speaking of the physical toll of football, 17 games this past season. I know you battled through a calf injury at a minimum last year. What kind of a difference in having that extra game, that extra week, that extra, that extra stretching of the rubber band, what, what did that do for you and, and your teammates as far as you noticed? Um, hmm. it's definitely, I mean, an extra week of football without extra pay is definitely different. I'll tell you that much. Uh, it's, you know, Hey, football is football. I love playing football. It's a long season that made it a little bit longer. Um, you know, I, and I'm all, I'm all up for playing more football. Uh, it's, it's awesome. You get more exposure. You get to play in front of more fans. You get to go to another city. Like it's a blast. Uh, I wish they would throw uh, another bye week in there somewhere. You know, I'll take two buys, you know, let the body recover a little bit. Let's let your star players stay on the field longer. Um, so you don't have all those injuries. So yeah, that's kind of my take on it. I, I just prefer one more rest week and then I'll be good to play more games. One of the assistant coaches in San Francisco, Mike McDaniel, head coach of the Dolphins. Now, how much will the offense do you think miss Mike McDaniel? Oh, I mean, Mike was a important part of our offense. Um, he was, he brought in a lot of different, you know, a lot of different ideas to the run game, especially. Um, he was very creative. He put guys in positions to succeed. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're going to definitely miss Mike. 
I think our run game will definitely be similar. It won't be the same, obviously, but, you know, we have uh, Coach Furster um, and Coach Shanahan that are doing the run game stuff. And, I, I mean, I, I think Kyle knows how to do run game, which I'm excited about as well. So we're going to miss him, and I'm going to miss his, uh, his positive energy. And uh, he's definitely got great swagger out there with his shoes all the time. But I'll miss him. Um, but I'm not, I'm not like worried about it because I, I think the position, the, the coaches that we have in place, are, they're very good at what they do, and I'm excited to see how it's different. There's an obvious question, uncertainty lingering over the roster at the quarterback position, if you haven't heard. Trey Lance, really? Jimmy Garoppolo. H how, do you, how do you, as a team leader, guy that's been there, been around, established yourself, proven yourself, how do you keep that from being a distraction for you and the guys? I mean, we're kind of used to it at this point. I mean, Jimmy G's been <laughs> under scrutiny since after the 2018 season where he tore his ACL. And that whole season is like, oh, is Jimmy G the guy? Then he comes back, takes us to a Super Bowl. Then we lose. And then the next offseason is, oh, is Jimmy G the guy? And now we had another injury. 2020 was a tough year for the Niners. And then we came back and go to another NFC championship game. And so, like, we, we've been through this. Um, it is what it is. I don't think it's really much of a distraction. I mean, I can't tell being in the building. I see the guys show up every single day, go run routes, we lift weights, go to meetings. And it's not really even a topic of conversation. You know, we're all here just trying to get better. And whether that's Jimmy G, whether it's Trey Lance, whether it's Nate Sudfeld or our Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy, you know, whoever's slinging that rock, uh, hopefully just throw it to me more than anybody else. You have said that Trey Lance has an insane ceiling. He just mm -hmm. needs to play to get there. What, what's in the best interest of the team for 2022? Is it Trey Lance working toward his ceiling and dealing with the growing pains? Or is it Jimmy Garoppolo, who already is basically a finished product and can step in and pick up where he left off last year? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? I, you know, that's one reason I'm glad I'm not the head coach of the 49ers. <laughs> so that's all on coach Shanahan, you know, like, and I'll give you both ways. Like, you know, Jimmy G awesome in the huddle, great leader directs guys, people are, you know, you know, go to attention when he's talking, he's got a quick release. He knows the offense, you know, like I said, been to NFC championship games. So he knows what he's doing. Um, Trey Lance, can run, extend plays, does all the play action stuff. Incredible. Could throw the ball 70 yards. So it's just, it, it, I don't know. It's a toss up for me. Like I said, as long as they're throwing me the football, I, it is what it is. You know, I just want it, football is a competitive sport. Um, if there's not competition, if you're not fighting for your starting job every single day, then you're not going to get any better. And so it, it was nice to see those two push each other all year. And I think Trey learned a lot from Jimmy. And, you know, if, if Trey's a starter and if there's growing pains, hey, so be it. I think we have a good enough players around him to help him succeed from Trip Williams to Ayuk to hopefully Debo to me to our run game. So, uh, you know, I think we have plenty of, play, uh, plenty of players around him to help him succeed. A few weeks ago, Jimmy Garoppolo – did an interview with Adam Shine and said that last year was strange and I'm not sure I would wish that on anybody. What did you see, if anything, to suggest that Jimmy G was going through a year that he wouldn't wish on anybody? I mean, everybody can see it. When you trade three first round draft picks for a quarterback, it kind of has a writing on the wall, doesn't it? I mean, uh, and Jimmy did nothing but be a professional every single day. He didn't complain about it one time. He wasn't in the corner, you know, talking crap about, you know, the situation. He showed up every day as the starting quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers. Um, and he went out there and practiced every day. He worked hard every single day. He set good examples for all the young guys, for all of us. And he motivated everybody. So, like, I don't know if there's a better professional in the NFL than Jimmy Garoppolo with how he dealt with that situation. And I think he, you know, he made everyone around him better that year. And it was like, hey, you're dealing with something that no one else here is dealing with. And you're being incredible about it. I can deal with any of my stuff and move on and, you know, just go play football. So it was it was great. You know, the way he handled it was great for us. And, I mean, I, I wouldn't wish that upon anybody else. But, hey, he, he did a lot with it. And he played at a high level. I'm thinking back to tight end university. Let's finish it up where we started. All those tight ends there. Who's going to be there to throw the balls? <sighs> Who, is, is Jimmy G going to be? Are you going to have some quarterbacks there? You can't just be the jugs machines. No. So we got a, I'm working on a couple. I got, I got, I got, I got three confirmed for you. I got, I got my guy, CJ Beathard. I got uh, my guy, Nick Mullins. Uh, I got my guy, Trey Lance. He's coming down to TEU. Um, you can help me peer pressure, but Zach Wilson's at about 99%. He's trying to decide if he wants to come back from Cabo or not. And I was like, Zach, you're going to come back from Cabo. So if you want to help me influence him a little bit. Um, 
And then the last one I'm working on, uh, Josh Allen's trying to see if he can make it work. So hopefully we have a handful of awesome quarterbacks there. You could also talk to us about running routes and you know what they see out there. So that'll be pretty fun. Josh Allen's a guy you could recruit to be a tight end. Oh, dude, he's got the energy for it too. I mean, he's basically, he's a tight end with a, with a cannon for an arm. All right. Well, hey, uh, appreciate some of your time. Congratulations again on all your success and all the best with tight end university, June 22 to 24 Vanderbilt university, Nashville, Tennessee presented by Charmin. Don't wipe your butt with pages from a book. Wipe your <laughs> butt with Charmin. Yes, Tag sir. Commercial. All right. Great Brennan. stuff, George. Thank thanks, you. Pal. See ya. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.